Check, check, check. Hey, I'm on. That's a good thing. All right. Um, hey, welcome to church this morning. I know you've got lots of welcomes. Uh, we're going to close out this year together. Um, this is my I'm Pastor Nate, or Nate Schlegel, and this is my wife, Ev. And uh, we do a lot of things together. Well, we're going to just end that right there. I don't know. Hey, you know, um, we do we do life together. Uh, we we're we've been married for twenty one years and um, serving the Lord uh, since we met in sixth and seventh grade. So there's a little history of us, and we're just glad to have you this morning. And um, uh, we've had a lot of conversation over those last twenty seven years, uh, twenty eight years, which is crazy to think. Uh, we were twelve and thirteen years old when we when we began uh, our adventure together, and. Um, We've had a lot of conversation about this year, this coming year. And uh, so we wanted to close out this year together, um, just on the same page. You know, in this house, uh, there's a lot of different people. But there's one, one, one body, one assembly. And it's important that, that we're on the same page. Um, you know, it, you could have a whole football team, uh, but if everybody doesn't know their role, in other words, the game plan... Um, It can just be chaotic, and though everybody shows up, though we all come together today, um, we might not get the result we want, that we all really desire in our heart because we're not together. We're not together. And, you know, um, maybe I'm going to, we're going to jump into the Word. I don't know if you have anything you wanted to bring back up before we jump into this, today's message, but as we come, so if you do, you're going to have to speak up. Um, (laughs) So, like, this is kind of the difficulty of talking together. Like, we can talk like this all the time, but sometimes when we're talking together, it's like, okay, what, you know, kick me or hit me or, you know, elbow me or something. Um, but if she has something. Anyway, as we come into 2024, uh, we're, we're going to see a house in order. We're going to see a house in order. And, um, and so, really, the, the, as we close out this year, uh, really, if we're going to start and have a house in order uh, this morning, what we're going to talk about is starting with one. Starting with one. And that's the title of this morning's message. We're going to talk about starting with one and uh, get things in order. I I don't want to wait till till 2024 uh, until we, we, in a sense, uh, cross uh, cross the cusp or cross the the transition line, in a sense. And I know there's a Gregorian calendar, and I I get all that. But for for all of us, there is significance. And and I think even this kind of deal... Um, when, when we talk about calendars and we talk about the Jewish calendar, which is the sun and the stars and how it's all set, and the Gregorian calendar, can I tell you that God knew man was going to be here? Can I tell you that God knew man was going to order their days in, through a Gregorian calendar? Can I tell you that all of the world would have been, he, he knew that all of the world was going to be going off of a January through a December schedule? Can I tell you that he knew that? And so that he, even though we work on his schedule, can I tell you that he knew that and there's days of significance that he, he, he knows that he has opportunities because people are poised or positioned and looking or in a sense have their ear turned toward what is the Lord saying. So as much as there's different calendars and all these kind of things, what, what I believe is this, is that there are days that people, humanity who God loves and sent his son for, whose eyes and ears are turned toward him. This is one of those days. This is one of those times. You'll find this, there's another time that you, often that happens, whether people are, are, are devout Christians or, or, or not, there's something about Easter. There's just a day, and, and you can hammer on people or, or whatever, but there's something, there's a drawing as you talk about a, a Savior or something that, that causes people to go, uh, maybe I should take a look at that. Christmas is another one. You know, there's certain days, and and um, and I believe that the Bible says this. I know the Bible says this. That, that precious in the eyes of of the, our Father is the death of His saints, of, of a loved one. Can I tell you that there are days that are marked for you when your daddy went to heaven? That's precious in His eyes and precious in your eyes, and that the Lord speaks on those days because you're. They're precious to him. He remembers those days. And you remember those days. You know, you, you see those days, and, and, and the comforter comes in on those days. And he speaks specifically. Have you ever been, have you ever been there? Have you had, had hard moments where there's days, but those days, somehow there's a grace there? 
I'm telling you, there's, he speaks every day. But anyway, as we come into this, this year, before we hit 2024, we felt like it would be important that we would set, in a sense, the stage or get, or even really this morning, this, all of this morning is about asking you a question. Asking, uh, asking a question. And um, because uh, you are going to have to decide that answer. And um, the, the, the amazing thing about questions in school is, is you don't have to discover the question. You can be taught the answer. You, you, don't, have to, you don't have to answer something that you make up. You can, you can respond with the answer that was taught by, your, by the teacher. Like if I was to ask you the question today, what's two plus two? You would all would say four because you were taught that. Because you were taught that. So what the answer that you and I give, hopefully the answer that we would respond with would not be one that is one of self-discovery or, or whatever you, you want or whatever you desire, but it would be one that you were taught, that you heard of the Lord, that you heard from the teacher. And so, go ahead. Which is also, um, just to kind of plug our daily Bible reading, um, this is why it's so important, not only that we're in the Word, because that's where the answers are found. That's where the, the Holy Spirit does what he speaks, what God has said. He brings back to your remembrance everything that he's spoken. So this is why it's so important to have that daily discipline and why I love. And we heard, um, if you were in huddle today, hopefully the huddle leader shared the testimony of just the 2023 Bible reading, which Pastor Nate and I had got so much feedback on from our y'all church family of just people saying, man, this year was so monumental for me because we were all doing it together. You know, there's something about coming to God's house together, but there's also something knowing there's a little bit of accountability. It's not like each of us were going to you and going, hey, make sure you're doing it. But what almost every week we were reminding, we were talking about it, what we're reading the word together. Well, why is that important? Why was there testimonies coming out? Because the word produces fruit. The word produces fruit in our lives. And the more that we intake the word, how many of you would say, even if you weren't 100% perfect, even if you fell off the bandwagon, even if you didn't finish, in a sense, how many of you would say you intook or took in more of the word this year mm. in 2023? Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. You know what's so awesome about that is now the Holy Spirit has stuff to work with. Because every time the word of God is spoken, every time the word of God is heard, every time the word of God comes in through your eyes and comes down into your heart, it's a seed. And those seeds are promises. Those seeds are things that the Holy Spirit can then bring back up. So this is why also we wanted to do it again this year and even add in Proverbs. Um, we heard that. But that's part of a house in order, coming together in God's house, but doing things together. Coming together, reading the word together. I know he's going to be probably talking about it in the weeks to come, but prayer is so important. Putting God first. These are all so important. And really it should be a spiritual discipline and a spiritual habit that we have of coming to the, to the Lord in our day to hear what he has to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and the, the spiritual discipline, so it's not about drudgery. It's about delight. You know, um, I don't know about you, but have you ever had it to yourself to the point where it's tough to tie your shoes because you haven't been disciplined in what you're eating? That's not very much of a, that's drudgery, uh, trying to tie your shoes that way. But it's delightful that I can tie, I, I'm, and I can play with my kids, that I can do what I'm, what I'm supposed to do. I can finish strong because of discipline. So discipline's about delight, not about drudgery. It's always about, always been about, about delight. Um, and you know, even at the accountability, this Bible reading is not your end all study. If you want to you know, increase in all these kind of things, but it is an accountability. It is an accountability. And I don't know about you, but does anybody, do you, it's irresponsible and you'll find yourself digging out from a hole if you don't go into Christmas with a little bit of a budget. Have anybody ever done that without a budget? Oh, shoot, how much did we spend? You start tallying it up. And you'll find that just a little bit adds up, doesn't it? A little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Yes, 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 yes. And you find that there's just excess of spending. Well, so because you didn't think you spent as much. But can I also tell you the opposite is true when you think you're reading the Word? You think you're reading the Word and you think you're doing pretty good. But if you really look at what you actually invested, you didn't invest as much as you thought. 
you know, I, you think you, oh, I just missed a couple of days, and then you go back and you didn't check it off, and you realize that you're, I don't know, a few weeks behind? That quick. It's that quick. As quick as it just, uh, uh, as quick as it just like 100, 100, 100, 100. You know, it's like, I thought I just spent 15 here and 20 there and 37 here and 40 here and 12 there. And how did, how is that amount to $600? Where did $600, what? Where did you, I, I'll, here it is. It's the same way spiritually. And so accountability, an account is an important thing. It's, 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 it's the most basic level of stewardship, an account. And so this is why journals are great. This is also why I believe one of the one of the tools that was so significant this year is that is the app Bible reading plan, because you can always go there. It's a, your ledger. I know we don't do checkbooks anymore, but it's your ledger in a sense where you can go back and you can say, "Here's where I'm at. Here's where I'm at." It's always there. Somebody's keeping it even for you. You know, it's not just oh, I lost my bookmark. Where was I at? And trying to and then getting discouraged. But yet you can see and you can. You can go back and you can even, I love how it even says catch-up day. <laughs> on, on, or, or if you couldn't put it on there, you could put it review day. What did the Lord speak to me? You know, go over again. Amen. All right, so we're going to talk this morning about, about house in order. A house in order. But we're going to start like this uh, as we start into 2024. Let's start with one. Start with one. And um, I, I want to I turn to Matthew chapter 6, 19 through 33. It's a fairly large portion of scripture, <clears throat> and you, you will have noted, uh, if you've been here for any length of time um, in the last couple months, we've talked a lot about Matthew uh, chapter 6, uh, probably verse 18 through 22, talking about uh, finances, talking about not so much finances, but how you see, and, um, and we're going to look at, we're going to read this, and we're going to see that in the middle of both uh, talking about money and talking about worry, or you could say it this way, greed and worry. Greed and worry. He's talking about what you're chasing uh, and what, what can keep you, what, what, both things are distracting. And so let's just read here and we're going we're gonna to pick it up here. So by, verse 19 of uh, Matthew chapter 6, it says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store for yourselves treasure in heaven, where moth and rust do not dis- uh, moth and rust do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. We talked uh, on this. We talked about um, there was a series. Anybody remember the title of it? Uh, from heaven, uh, windows of heaven. We talked uh, in series about uh, about a, a storehouse of heaven. And we, we looked at this verse pretty extensively uh, as we come at, at where you're storing your treasures, where, you're, where, where, where is your treasure. And the Lord tells us to be storing it somewhere. And there's, a, there's this idea for you and me to store on earth because there's, there's safety in when you feel like your hands are full or your wallet's full or your bank account's full. There's, 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 there's comfort. There's promises that those things tell you certain things that they can't really provide. But there, there's just this, there's this safety there. And so what we do, because of it, its promise is so great, and we see that there's a strength, we order our days to make sure that we're strong in that way. Right? We, we order our days, and so we, we'll, we'll work the extra. We'll do this, and then none, none of it's not wrong to work extra. It's not, but, but getting things in order, we're gonna, this is what we're going to get to. It, it, we, they, they, they promise things. And so we, we're chasing after things. We're chasing after things. And, and, and so he says this, and this is this, the middle passage uh, of, of what he's talking about, about what we're chasing and what we're building. And every one of us, uh, because we're in this earth, we have need of things. You need a car. You need, you need clothes. You need food. You need all of, all of these things. And, and if, if, you, if you have enough, then, you, then you're good, right? Next verse, verse 22. It says, the eye, of the, um, the eye is the lamp of the body. And your eyes, or if your eyes, rather, are good, your whole body will be filled with light. One translation, or many translations says, if your eye is singular, if your eye is singular, then your whole body will be filled with light. But if your eyes are bad, your whole body will be filled with darkness. If then 
the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? I want to I wanna go back to verse 22, and it says, if your eyes are good, if your eyes are good. We, we talked a little bit about this in the Windows of Heaven series, but here we are again. If your eyes are good, if your eyes are singular, let's, we're going to break that word down real quick. It comes from two words, which is alpha, okay, and I have it right here. It's the word alpha and the word P-L-O-O-S. Alpha, I am the alpha and the omega. I am the first and the last. I am the one, I'm the A to Z. Like, I am the first, the one, the, the beginning. Guess what we're talking about? The one. And that next word where we get this, if your eyes singular, is the word voyage. So he says this, let me put it this way. So it means to sail or to have a voyage. So one voyage. If your eye is, is, is about one voyage or one, one, one purpose or one walking forward, if I'm only chasing one thing, if I understand, let me say it this way, if I understand my life there's, is to have, I'm here for one purpose. There, or let me say this, if everybody here, you only get one voyage. Everybody here only gets one voyage. One voyage. What am I using that voyage for? Who's, who's leading that voyage? Is money leading that voyage? Well, is greed leading that voyage? Because equally, equally as evil as greed and chasing things, that that's the driving voyage that I'm to try to get, get enough, try to get more and more and more and more and more, is this, this other side of, called worry. So the, the one voyage that you and I are to be pursuing is what God's created us for. We're going we're gonna to talk about that here, here in a moment. But he said this, he said, if your eye, the eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eyes are, if, if they, what they see is not this and this and this, and, and I need to get more of this, I need to get more of that. But if your eye is good, if it's singular, if your eyes are about that one voyage, then your whole body is filled with light. Can I tell you the darkness in, 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 in society is so much at an all-time high because what you see everybody else has, where our eyes aren't so singular anymore. Our eyes are just, they have this and they have, then what that tells you is you don't have what you don't have what you don't have. You're, so now your, your body's filled with darkness because you're like, I, gotta, I, don't, I can't. Huh. Let me just wear out. Let's keep reading here. But again, if your eyes fill with darkness, your whole body, darkness. Verse 24, no one can serve two masters. Either he will hate one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You can't serve both God and money. Therefore, in other words, we're talking still. So he's talking, he, he talked about money, like lay not for yourself up treasures, because how you see, and he says, you can't serve God and money. You'll either love one or hate one, or you'll serve one and be devoted and despise or think less of. So many times, it's not that we don't love God. It's not our lives are just pursuing other things because i got to make sure I can take care of myself because God can't. Just, cause, just You know, I, I would, but God, you just can't. Just you can't, so I will. This is just this is just a mindset, okay? This is just a mindset. It's 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 the underlying message that we believe, okay? But he says in in the next verse, he says, therefore, he says, take no thought or uh, do not worry about your life. So it's interesting. It, both of these things, both greed and worry, are about your life. It, you know what it is? It's self-consuming. Anybody self-consumed in here? All of us have, have a tendency to be self-consumed. Anybody had a weird pain in their shoulder or in their stomach or in their foot? or in, in, You know, it's like, what was that? I, I don't know. I think that could be plaque in my ankle. And it, maybe that's going to go to my heart or to my brain, and I could have an aneurysm. I, I, anybody ever had a thought? I know that's maybe, maybe that was sounded extreme, but if you would hear yourself about yourself, when you had, it was pizza or it was gas, a sharp pain. What's that sharp pain? It's probably cancer of the pancreas. No, that was called Coca-Cola <laughs> with pizza. But you're, it's amazing how worry can, ch can change you uh, and, and to the point to where you can't serve anything but self. I, 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 I got to serve me here. 
I got to serve me here. I got to serve me. And then my voyage, my one voyage becomes like this. And you know what's crazy is? I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. Oh, that ain't good. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. When, I, I, when my eyes are in, I, I don't finish the race that I've, there's no mark set before me. Yeah. I, there's not, there's not a, a prize to win. There, like all of what I, purpose of my days, it's just self, it's self-preservation. It's it, instead of understanding and knowing that God is the one that holds my days. He's the one that holds my breath. He's the one that knew me and formed me before I was born. And he appointed me. And, and he appointed not just me, but he appointed families. Yes. Uh, this, is, this is something we're going to get into the year. But it's interesting how God appointed families. Your children. And your children's children. That, that one had, yeah, you had something to do with it. But the, the, the spirit that God breathed into that young man or into that young woman, that wasn't you, that was God. And he knew and he formed and he graced and, 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 and equipped uh, uh, generations, families to bring about. And so it's important that we understand why we're here because if I don't understand this as a father, if I don't understand this as, as the one, one that's to be leading our home and to be chasing after one thing, you start with the one, start, then, then, then guess what my family, excuse me, is going to be chasing? Nothing. We're, we're, we're in a sense just spinning like this. The whole, whole, yet we were supposed to be, there was supposed to be a forward thrust for the kingdom of God. There was supposed to be advancement and fulfillment in your heart. So as we keep reading here, he just says, don't worry about your life, what you're going to eat or what you're going to drink. Don't worry about, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. He says, don't chase after things. Don't try to lay up for yourself, for yourself, for yourself, for yourself. And don't worry about yourself, yourself, yourself. But he said, instead, this should be the focus of your days. Matthew 6, 33. But seek. So first, the first thing that should be on your and my mind is what is the kingdom of God up to? That's the first thing on your, to be on your and my mind. And he said, if you and I don't understand about how our eyes see, if we don't understand the, the simple principle that our, as our eyes see, our eyes see and, and what we seek that we, if we don't understand, again, going back to this word, that, <clears throat> again, the word alpha polo, I don't know how to say that word in Greek, but it means voyage, okay? If, if your eyes are good, if your eyes are singular, if you don't understand, you get one, one voyage. You, you get one shot. You get, you get one. How many of you have ever played a game at the fair? You could just buy more shots. You know, anybody ever bought a hundred dollar teddy bear at the fair? <laughs> you know, from the the top, because you, even though you only get one shot to knock down those three bottles, you know, the milk bottles off the thing you only get one shot you can buy another one can i tell you you can't buy another one there's no buying another one you get one shot so as we come into this year let's let's remember one shot you get one you get one shot we think we th sometimes we think oh well next year oh well next year oh well next year really one shot so, he says, Matthew 6, 33, but seek first the kingdom of God and his way of doing things or his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. This is amazing. When you chase the one thing, the God, he, in Ephesians chapter 2, he, all the things that were already prepared for you to walk in, you get to walk in them. You'll find that as you chase and, and you seek him and his way of doing things, you'll find that that. His way of doing things, His righteousness, His, his right way. You'll find that there's things that, that you're going to do because it's, what, it's His way. Wisdom will, will flow and riches will follow. Hard work and diligence and favor. Like, oh, these are things that, that they follow, but you got to get the one thing first. The, and, and us understanding that voyage. And so, um, anyway, let, let's go to Psalms uh, 19, uh, 13 through 14. Here's the thing that I found uh, just with humanity. 
It's not always that we're trying to do something wrong or evil. It's just that we presume a lot. You know, we presume to know the way. We presume. And this is, this. I love this verse. This is a psalm, uh, not a, it's, a, it's a prayer uh, of David. I would call this an alignment prayer. You know, we have prayer, prayers of consecration. We have a prayer of, you know, maybe a rededication. But how about a, aligning our lives prayer? Could there be something right now that you and I are doing that might not be what God is asking? That is actually causing us to miss the mark? And why do I miss the mark? Well, because I'm not aiming at that one thing. Because I'm not aiming at that one thing. I remember having uh, being in, in a deer stand with my young boy, Matthew. He was about five at the time and had a blanket and goldfish crackers and all this kind of stuff. And here come this big eight-point buck in. And he was, I was like, hey, you see him? So he's, we're in this tent, you know, and he's like, yeah, yeah. And he had the grunt call, and we had been practicing blowing the grunt call. And uh, I was going to shoot him when he stopped it. We were, we were hunting together, we're tag team. And so I said, okay, buddy, you blow the grunt call, and when you blow that grunt call, I'm going to shoot him. You stop him, and I'll shoot him. Okay, 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 whenever you're ready, blow that grunt call. And can I tell you, he blew that grunt call, and when he did, he blew it like a goose call. He blew that thing so hard, I went, whoa! I, and I shot, I don't know where I shot, but I did not hit that deer that was only 20 yards away with a gun. I, I, I mean, I shot somewhere. It scared me. And, 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 and what happened was, I didn't hit the mark because I was, something else came up. I, though I wanted to hit that, I wanted to, believe it or not, I wanted to hit that deer. I wanted that deer. I wanted it. That, that was my priority. That was what I did, did all this work for, and it, and it was happening. And I was this close until something else came up, and it pulled me off. And it pulled me off. I, I wonder how many times our intentions are to go here and to do this, but then something else comes up. And so what we, we, we say this, we begin to prioritize our schedule instead of scheduling our priorities our list gets too full, and we get. I, I remember doing this this message one time up here. We had a, I had a box, and, and in the box I had all the important things of life, and they were. I wrote it on light bulbs. You have family. Oh, how many of you believe family is important? Oh, absolutely. How about your job? Yes. How about your hobbies? Oh, yes. How about the Lord? Of course. Yes, that's number one. Okay, great. So let's just start putting them all in the box of our life. And we get them all in there, and they quite don't fit. So we, what do we do? We try to rearrange them a little bit, and we get it to where it's just almost there. And, and we got to get it closed because otherwise we're And so we push it down. And what ends up happening more often than not is the number one thing is the one thing that takes a hit first because we're trying to prioritize our schedule rather than schedule our priorities. And we realize that we think we have all this time. And we're to, the Lord says, teach me to number my days. Or this is a prayer. Teach me to number my days. We, you know, we need to be taught to number. And so, we like, Lord, help me. And so, this the things that we're doing. It's not so many times that that it, that, that, that we're choosing to go ahead and go way off the deep end. It's just that there's things added to us that we our yeses and our noes and our and, and that are that are overtaxing our days. They're robbing us, and so we need more for this, and we need more for that. But I really never even was intended to be over here. But I said yes to something that I wasn't even, that I asked. Did I ask, or am I just, is my, do I just do whatever I want? I, I just, it's up to me to lead my life and me to run my life. Well, it is your choice on whom you're going to serve. You can serve you. You can serve money. Jobs are telling people where to go. Jobs. I had my son, my youngest son, yesterday say, I'm going to be a UPS driver. I'm like, <laughs> what? Where did that come from? This is just out of the blue. We were out, out to eat last night, and, uh, and he said, I'm going to be a UPS driver, at least for a little while when I grow up. Oh, what's that? oh okay. Why? Because they make like 100000 a year. I'm like, oh. So he's 13, and I'm like, Really? 
He's, and then, then my oldest boy, he's like, yeah, they make good money. I, I saw this thing. They make really good money. So we pursued it to Google, which means, of course, we found all the truth on that. Oh, <laughs> well, I saw it online, so I know it's true. Um, Google. So I Googled it, or Evan Googled it, and, and what was the median income? It was like in Arkansas, 30, it, it, yeah, it was really funny how it quote, uh, said it. It said, uh, this is a great job, the, the income of this. Uh, is 36,000 a year. You wanted to be pursued. And then Kayla's like, what? It's not 100,000? Uh, probably not. Maybe eventually if you, you know, work your way up. Or he's like, yeah, I don't want to do that then. No, he, he didn't say that quite yet. Then we told him, but you have to, if you're a UPS driver, I mean, nowadays, it's like seven days a week. It's not just a Monday to Friday, nine to Packages five. Packages are showing up at yeah, seven o'clock like at night. Yeah, I said like weekends, Saturdays. He said, never mind, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> But jobs are trying, why? Because they promise us this. They promise us this. And so we're, we don't realize how much job, and I'm not saying jobs aren't important and, and being diligent, that's absolutely important. But what's most important is starting with one. The most important thing is starting with one. And, I'm, and there's this cliche, who's first? If I was to ask you, what's the, what's the number one thing in your life? What's the most important thing? Austin, you're going to get this right as youth pastor. Who should be number one? God, Okay. <laughs> That's great. Good job. So now, while we're looking, instead of remembering back, we could remember 2023, but let's, let's reflect on 2023. Let's not remember. Let's reflect. Where is he? Where is he? Is he yeah, he, yeah, I know you said number one, but where is he? Well, hold on. God knows my heart. Well, I know. I know he knows my heart. But do I? Do I know my heart? Do I know what has my heart? Do I know if things have my heart or a worry and a care has my heart? What has my heart? What's in my heart? What is, what is the... This is matters. And so as we took time to reflect, we actually have to... I wrote the definition of, of reflect back. It's careful thought of the image seen. That's reflection. But I, I, I love the one of the definitions of reflection is bounce back. Bounce back. You know, if the, the reflection of light is the bounce back of light. Can I tell you, when you take careful thought of the image that you see, when you look into the mirror and you go, you know, I said this is number one. I said this is important. I said that my weight's important and I want to live long and play with my grandkids. But it doesn't really look like it. When I look and take careful thought, and I listen, and I'm still. So that, I, how many of you know reflections? You ever try to, you know, hold still? Hold still, because you can't see when everything's moving. But if you hold still and have a little reflective thought, you can bounce back. You can get things back. You can put it, you could rearrange. I love that, just thinking about reflection. Careful thought of what's seen, or bounce back. It really is your ability to bounce back. Is to make make the adjustment and to, to to us to set again, and that's why I love as we come into New Year. This is why I love the New Year time. It's such a set again. It's a it's a it's a set. It's a it's a it's a it's a reset. Yeah. Setting again. And uh, we have this verse Psalms forty six ten, <clears throat> and this just popped up in my heart. And actually, this is a verse that pops up with me frequently. But it says, "Be still, and know that I am God." And, you know, like he said, in order to reflect, if I were to say, hey, everyone, you need to reflect on 2023. Well, what does that take? Time. Mm -hmm. Reflection takes time. And this is why, um, you know, we talk about it. But even in, in your time with the Lord, even in time to reflect, I can't reflect properly, really, if I have this out. I can't reflect properly if kids are running around and the house is a disaster and I'm trying to, or whatever it is, whatever those distractions are. And how many of you know our world is so full of distractions right now? Mm -hmm. And distractions really cause us not to reflect. And really why distractions are so honestly detrimental to our spiritual life, detrimental really to a spirit, soul, and body. It affects our whole three-part being, distractions does, is because it causes us not to take time to reflect of what's actually going on here. 
How many of you know it can be so easy, especially nowadays, to avoid what's going on in my heart? Really, what's going on? You know, we've talked about it before, but in my heart, I can't compartmentalize my heart. So if there's stuff in there, it's in there. It's not like, oh, this is over in one side and it's not affecting me and that's kind of the dark side of my heart that never gets, it's in there. And so if we don't ever take the time to do what? Be still and know that I am God. Why does he have to tell humans that? And this is before social media. This is like he had to tell human, humanity whom he made be still and know that I am God. Why? Because humans want to distract themselves with things that take them away from knowing God, from knowing what's going on in my heart. Because here's the deal. What's going on in my heart does affect how I know God. Does affect how I see God. Does affect how I interact with God. And so it's important for us, especially at the new year, which is why it's so awesome to have these special times and really to capitalize on them. And really, like he talked about, one voyage, one mark, is to take time as a family, as an individual, to really assess where are we going? What are we doing? Is my life, is my family, is it really kingdom first? Reflecting back on 2023, did it really reflect kingdom first? Did it really reflect God first? Is there really stuff that I distract myself with on social media or look at or push aside because I just want to busy myself with work, with job, with schedules, with things because I don't want to address what's going on here? And put up Psalms 19 to get back again. And it's not so much that we sometimes even just want to distract. Sometimes we're just distracted. It's not that maybe we're trying to numb something. Sometimes it is. But sometimes it's just that we, he said, keep back your servant. And some, you would say in here, how many of you would say, I'm, I'm a servant of the Lord? You know, we'd say, yeah, I, I want to serve the Lord. I'm not my own. I've been bought with a price. Yeah. But he said, keep back that, that servant. Lord, show me from presumptuous sin. What does that mean? Just to miss the mark. Things that are causing me to miss the mark. The mark that I was here for. So keep me back. He said, tell me about him. Let me know. Show me. Where I just presume to just say, I can walk here and say this and do that and say yes to this. He says, let them not have dominion over me. Not, hey, he, he, he came to set you free. I'm free. Yeah, I can do whatever I want. I'm free. But he said this. He said, let not that freedom rule me. Let me understand that I actually have a master still. And he said, um, then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Next verse. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my rock, my redeemer. I, I, I give this example because it's so fitting for me. Facebook marketplace <laughs> is not always the, the meditation. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart Thinking about that next thing is not always pleasing to the Lord. You know, I know it's not looking at porn, but it is equally a distraction. It may be not causing, um, how do I say this, uh, complete chaos in my family and in, in life, but I can tell you there are plenty of times presumptuous sins are causing and drawing me from the mark I'm intended to hit. That's just a simple analogy. Because so what happens is, because of presumptuous things, we are, we, are, are, we are living our lives, and we are scheduling and ordering our week based on what's coming next, instead of based on what's most important. I'm going to say that again. We are scheduling our lives based on what's next. Instead of what's most important. So what's next? I, I don't know. What do we got coming up? Well, so okay, we got this, 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 and this. Okay, so we can either be on the same page here. Okay, this is that marriage talk, right? Okay, so are you grabbing the kids? Oh, I got to be at that game. I got to do that. Yep, yep. And then we have this. Okay, then we have that. Okay, all right, all right. Sounds good. Oh, man, this is a full week. All right. It's what's next. It's what's next. Can I tell you there's always more next, 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 next? 
And so many times we get to the, the next, if the next isn't some great thing, it's kind of like, I need a bigger next. No, no, no. You know, all we need is we need one thing. We need the one thing to be the main thing, and, and that we need to schedule our lives around what matters most. Get, start with that one thing and the understanding of this. You, when you get to the end of your one voyage, you and I, we don't want to say, I wish I would have. I wish I would have ordered my days based on what matters most. Can I, can I ask you, uh, Austin, you got number one in the right spot. What would be your number two? Family, marriage, family. Hmm. This is good. This is good. These are, these, that's, these are good. But then I'd have to ask, what does that look like? How is that scheduled? Well, i got to put this on first, and then I'll put my family in next. I gotta put like, how, like this is this is a true thing. Like, how many of you have jobs? Most everybody here has a job, and so what do you do? Or you have school, so you schedule school, you schedule this, you schedule all of those things. That I'm, when am I gonna get to hunt? If I don't, when am I gonna? Uh, and so the things that are familiar, family, family, familiar, family. That's often the things that take the biggest hit. And then when we're with what when we're with what matters most. We're with what matters most. We're not, this is reflection. This is the bounce back. This is taking careful thought of what matters most. Anyway, so let's go to James chapter, um, so go ahead and ask the question. Oh, so the, oops. Sorry, I'm here. Um, so the question that we wanted to ask everyone today that you can write down in your notes is why am I alive? Why am I alive? What am I here for? Enough of me talking. Why are you here? Not just at church today. Why, why are you here? Why is your heart beating? What's the purpose to your life? I can't answer that. If you don't know, James 1 says this, verse 5, if any of you lacks wisdom or understanding, ask him. Ask the Lord. Be still. Be still. Ask the Lord. He said, ask, ask him, and he'll give you generously without reproach. And uh, it'll be given to him. So he'll give you wisdom. He'll give you understanding. He'll give you the, the understanding of your days. Just ask the Lord, Lord, why am I here? You know, it's crazy how there's this transition. And I don't, I don't understand it. But I got a bunch of teenagers here. And at this, there's an age of what they call transition. And they're leaving mom and dad's house. They're figuring out what they want to do with their life. Um, trying to figure out, like, what has God called me to do? Like, how many of you are, how many young people are like, what am I supposed to do? Anybody? Okay. And you're not just looking at jobs and you're not just looking at, okay, dollar bills. Hopefully you're not just looking at what pays the most and all that. But this is how we're, we're navigating, trying to make the next decision of life. But it's crazy. Like, we hit this, I don't know, this age to like 24, college age done. And now we think that we don't have to ever... We go like, oh, I'm, I know where I'm doing. I know where I'm going. I'm doing my thing. Like, can I tell you, you and I, we should still be asking the Lord, what are you doing? What are you doing with my life? What am I to be doing with my life? Why am I here, Lord? Why am I here? I, you, can I tell you, reflection still needs to be happening. How am I doing, Lord? If, if, if you, you have me as a father, how am I? Am I fathering well, Lord? Am I? Am I? Am I? A husband, the right, am I am I serving you well, Lord? Is the is the reason what you created me for is it being fulfilled? Am I, am I distracted, Lord? This is this should be all, all, all the time. This is this this is the importance of quiet time, just morning quiet time. We we started talking about Bible reading. We're not my goal, Our goal in the Bible reading, can I tell you this? It's not to check a box. It's to start a conversation. It's to start a conversation with your and my creator. 
the one who has ordered my steps and informed me and knew me and, and deposited the gifts and the graces for which you, which I, I'm, you and I are going to need on this one trip. On this one trip. And so, but it says this, I think this is so, so important. You know, you can't have two number ones and make progress. You can't. You can't have two number ones. He actually says this. It says, but let him ask in faith without doubting. For one who doubts is like the waves of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all of his ways. When you and I, we, when we want to go this way, but we want to go this way. When we, 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 look, this is doubt. Doubt is two. Doubt is double-minded. Doubt is, well, I believe that the said word says this, but I see this. And as long as I consider this one and this one, I go nowhere. As long as I consider both, I go, I go nowhere. But when I, when, I, when I go fully on one, then now there's actually direction to my life. Can I tell you that fear can very much direct your life? Or so can the Word of God very much direct your life. So what word is holding, you know, what, what, what words? This is the significance of, of encouragement. We were talking about this er earlier, about how um, so many times as we come together and as we review the Word of God, it's hearing that Word of, of God again that really is an encouragement to our hearts. And that encouragement is kind of like... Uh, it's kind of like this. It's, it's, let's say you're trying to get your, your wife to step down off of the, on the ladder. You know what I'm talking about? Like step down on the ladder, but she's scared because she's on the roof. But she's like, I didn't want to be up here in the first place. Okay. This has happened. Okay. <laughs> Just come up here. I want to show you something. Oh, okay. No, no. Okay. So you get her up there, right? And now she's got to get down. But what she sees is the ground. I'm trying to just get her to look at the ladder, right? And through encouragement, I can take her eyes off the ground and bring it to the ladder through encouragement. And now there's progress through encouragement. Can I tell you, that's why we need to hear the word over and over again. Because what it does is it strengthens us. It encourages us to, to put a foot in front of another. Because she wanted off the roof. She just didn't know how. I can tell you there's so many Dads and husbands and wives and sons, they want to do what God, they just don't know how. Can I tell you the word of God is not just, it's, it's a lamp, it's a light. Can I tell you it's a strength? It's a strength and, 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 and a focus for you and me to be able to put a days, our days together. This is why the word is so, so, so vital. So a double-minded man is unstable in, in all of his ways. Um, there's no progress. There's no direction. So where do you want? You can't have two number ones. Who's number one? We got to establish that first and foremost. Isaiah forty six ten, he says this. And so as we look at this, and as we come into uh, twenty twenty four, uh, and as you 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 take time to pause and 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 reflect and give careful thought of your life, as you take time, maybe with your spouse, maybe as you sit down with your kids. Oh, I know it's not a party. No, this, this doesn't work in a party setting. This works only if you're going to pause so you can see clearly. Hey, are we, as a family, I know we, we're doing this, and I know, but, but does our lives outside of just going to church on Sunday, does it look, how does it look like, what would be the difference? What would be the difference? Like, this is conversation with, as dad and, and wife and, and, and son, or daughter, this is uh, as this is conversation. Hey, how did how, how did our giving look last year? Did my did our giving look? Did it reflect what our heart says and what we what we believe in our heart and what we said with our mouth? Does is my giving? Did did I give? Did we give more than last year? Because we made more. Why didn't we give more? Well, because do you have a why? If you don't, then you're, you're irresponsible. You don't know where you're going to end. You only have one, again, remember, one voyage. One. So this just takes time. It takes, it takes a moment. And this is why we're here today. 
you know, really, we'd love to just take time today. I wish we could just say, hey, we're going to take time and everyone's going to get quiet and we're going to take the next couple hours. You go, a couple hours? Absolutely. To just get with the Lord and each other. To bring the faith. This is, it's what it takes. Invest in, in your one trip, your one voyage. But he says this. And as you do, and as you invest, and as you sit down and you look at, you're going to have a picture of what you want, of what your heart desires. You're going to have a bounce back of what you want. And, and Isaiah 46.10, it says this, this is how God works. And as children, he tells us to imitate our father. You know, we're to be imitators of God. We're not, we're not God, but we're to imitate him. Did you know he declares the end from the beginning? Can I tell you, every story that you see in, in the Bible, God declared the end from the beginning, whether it's, hey, we're going to the other side, which is why the waves weren't such a, a big deal to him. We're going to the other side. Or whether it's from Joseph and his dream, can I tell you, that Joseph had to hear the end from the beginning. The pit would have got him. The dungeon would have got him. Potiphar's wife would have got him. But what, what, he, what he held to was the dream. What he held to was what God said at the beginning. And can I tell you that there are going to be bumps in 2024. There's going to be things that don't look like what you heard and what you said on the 20, uh, the, as you sat there with your family. It's going to go, well, here we are again. Oh, here we are, February. It's over, blah, 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 blah. Can I tell you, if you hold and you declare back and you look back and you hold on just like Joseph did to that dream, you're going to end up where God said that you could have when you heard from him, you took some time and said, Lord, this is what I want. I'm asking you for this. I'm seeking, I'm knocking, I'm asking. I'm seeking you, Lord. I'm knocking. I'm asking. I'm seeking. I'm knocking. I'm asking. Can I tell you it will be granted to you? Declare the end from the beginning. This is the Lord. And from ancient times, things not yet done. Saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will accomplish all my purpose. This is how God works. He declares the end from the beginning. Can I tell you, this is how you and I are to declare. Can I tell you the fig tree? Can I tell you, this is how you and I are to work. This is what faith looks like. Can I tell you to, to, to start with one and to finish with the one? To start with one and to finish with one? That's the order for everything. Everything is built off of that. It's going to come from you and I holding fast to the profession of our faith. How does faith come? By hearing. If you don't hear God's plan for your life, you won't have faith. And you won't have something to hold to, to declare and walk you in it. We're, we can't live our lives. Well, I don't understand why we think sometimes we can get saved but, and then with the rest is up to us. By faith, I'm saved. But no, the Bible says that the just shall live by faith. They shall order their days by faith. They shall, by faith, I got to hear what God has to say to me. I got to hear what God has to say to me. I got to hear what God has to say to me. So what's he saying? You know, what, what, what's, what's he saying? And what we'll find is, uh, Hebrews chapter 10, 23, um, it says this. And this is, the, I mean, this is so simple. Blueprints on a house is what declares to you what that muddy mess of a job site is going to become. Blueprints show tile floors and a, a nice, clean bathtub. You know, blueprints show the, the picture of what you say, that's sawdust and cigarette butts. It doesn't look anything like it. Yeah, it does. Where? Get back out the blueprint. Get back out the blueprint. Get back out the plan. Get back out what you st where you're starting. This is See, you don't start with the finished house. You start with the blueprint. It, for your family and your marriage to be restored. You don't start where everything's like, ha ha, we're skipping. You start with the blueprint. And it steps. And it, and it steps. And Jeremiah 29, 11, what says what? For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. And so this is something we've done probably for the last couple years. But if I'm to step into the future, so say we're all here together, December 31st of 2024. So we're a year ahead. What do I want to say on December 31st, 2024? I can know that because what? 
for I know the plans that I have for you. God knows what this year is to be for you, for your family. He, the plans, the picture, the end house, the blueprint. He knows, but it takes time to do what? Find out what those plans are. It takes time to reflect, to pray into, Lord, what do I see? And you know what? He paints. A lot of times for me, it's in pictures, words, pictures. What are those things? Without fear, without doubt, without, well, that'll never happen. That'll, like, what are those things that pop up that he shows you? Write them down. Because he wants to do those for you. Mm-hmm. I mean, what are you going to say next year, this one year from now? What are you going to say about what you're seeking, asking, knocking? What are you going to say about your family? What are you going to say about your marriage? What are you going to say about your children? What are you going to say about your finances? What are you going to say next year about your giving? Mm-hmm. I wish I would have, could have. What, what are you going to say about your health? What are you going to say about the scale? What are you going to say? Well, you're going to say what happened? Or are you going to say what God said all year? And you're going to see the end from the beginning. You're going to see the end, what you saw at the beginning. You hold fast to the profession of your faith. And the amazing thing is those blueprints, if you think of a house at the end... You know, a finished house. Like he said, you can get through the muck. You can get through the stuff because you know what's coming. You know the final. But you know what also that blueprint lays out? It lays out when you're supposed to call the contractors. It has an order of how you're supposed to do things. It orders your days. It orders things. This is why we have to have vision. This is why we have to have, Lord, what do you say? Because then it's going to order my calendar. It's going to order my days. It's going to tell me what I can do and what I can't do. Right. Otherwise, we're just gonna, you're just going to work on whatever happens next. We don't know what this year is going to hold. We don't know what, whatever's next. Whatever's next. Whatever's next. Let me tell you, there are some things you don't know, but there's something the Lord will show you, and this is how you're to order your days. And this is what's to be one. And where you said one is, it needs to be on the calendar first. So let's talk about prioritizing our calendar right now. Let's prioritize our calendar, or let's calendar our priorities. So number one needs to go on there first. So when when is your best time? When is your best time? Sometimes you give God your first and your best. You know, I think I, I believe mornings for us because that's the first. Otherwise, it always goes away. You know, you're going to get around to it. You're going to get around to it. This is why I believe it really is your first and your best. Can I tell you also, your first is your best. You just, it may just not have gotten that way because we've been so prone to living in our last, like our late nights, overnight, overnight. Can I tell you, Proverbs is going to talk to you about that, rising early and going to bed early. It actually talks about that. I know we do our own thing in the way we all want to do, but can I tell you, a lot of that's presumptuous. And we say that this is how I operate, and that's just who we are. Can I tell you, who you are is who God made you to be, not just the decisions that you... Can I tell you that, that, that we are made in his image and his likeness? Can I tell you personality and the quirks so often, it, well, I, that's just who I am. I'm shy. Mm, no. No. You're not. You're created in the image of your father. You're not. You may have a personality that is reserved, but you're not shy. No, you, you're bold. Does that mean you're brash? No. But it, it definitely means you look like your father. We, 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 we've hidden behind too many things in our lives instead of saying, Lord, make me into the image you have made me to become. Like, make me, let me look like fully, come to the end, fully looking as you designed me to be. Without a hurt that has now shaped my life. Without a fear that's now gripped and shaped my life. I can't do anything because of fear. I can't do this because of that. I can't do this because of that. No, Lord, shape my life. Let my life become what you, and let it look like what you created it to be. You declare the end from the beginning. Lord, this is what I'm going to partner with you. Show me what my life's to look like at the end, from the beginning. And I'll tell you what, he will. And you're going to see, you're going to see exactly, uh, you know, what, what 
You'll see, you'll see so many little things along the way as you get this one thing and you're focused on, you know, I'm not talking about a hundred different goals. Like just getting, getting some one simple, get the first thing first. You'll start that off and you establish in your life that your life, why are you here? Why are you here? Establish that. Establish why you're here. Uh, for me, I, this is what, what, I, what I got in my, in my life. I, I wrote this down. It is, it's simply this. I'm alive to represent Jesus and bring him glory. That's it. And everything else filters through that. Everything else. I'm alive to represent Jesus and, and bring him glory. That's everything else filters through that. So I can, add, I can filter my finances through that. I can filter, like, am I bringing him? I'm alive. That's for me. But as I come with that one thing, as I come with that one focus, what happens is, because I'm looking that one way, I'll see progress. And what, where progress is, what that is, that's encouragement. I'll see advancement. I'll see little things, that, and, I, and I'll be encouraged. And you know what we need more than ever before? We need encouragement. We need encouragement to, to continue. We need encouragement. But when we're chasing so many things, and I'm discouraged here, and I'm discouraged here, and I don't have, if I would just focus on the one thing, uh, we were listening to a message um, by Bill Johnson, and he was talking about a sniper. And he was talking about how a sniper, you know, uh, they could take two days to move 100 yards. Just so slow, so slow. And they're so, they're so aware and so focused on their one goal and their one mission and their one vision that they recognize even a blade of grass changing. Okay, I can move now. The wind's blowing. I can make my... Like they recognize every little little thing, little things because of where they're focused and where they're looking, and, and they see they they see adva they're advanced. It might be slow, but they're making advancement because they see all the things that are going on. It's like the same thing if we went and watched Stars the other night. Uh, how many of you watched that meteor shower? Anybody? I know a couple of people. Um, when we we went out to 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 the field at night, we laid on our truck and. And we were looking up, and we were laying side by side, and we were both looking at the sky. I was looking over here, kind of more to the, to the southwest, and she was looking more over here to the northwest. And I would sit there, and I'd go, oh, look it, look it. Oh. I, I, and what did you say? I don't see it. Just say it. I don't see it. But no. Oh, oh, hey, oh, oh, that was a good one. I don't see it. Oh, oh, there's another one. Did you see that one? No, I still don't see it. <laughs> oh, wow. And then I, and I, we're, on the, we're in one truck, and then uh, my, my boys and, and, and my cousin Ben, he's in another truck. And here, here's the conversation. Man, we're, we're listening to their conversation. This is so amazing. I've never, I've seen more stars tonight, shooting stars tonight, in, in 30 minutes. Than I, than I have in my entire life. And what did you say? <laughs> what did you say? I don't see them. <laughs> and, and when she was talking about what a, I don't see them, it was discouraging, wasn't it? Yes. Everyone else is, it was discouraging because it's just like you just see like a glimpse of good like what you came for, and God's moving, and and little because you're focused, and, and but then you said, Hey, look over here more this direction. And then what did you say? I see him, I saw one. <laughs> oh, yeah, did you see that one? Did you see that one? And you can look and you can see the little things, the little moments that God's encouraging you with, as as whether it's as you're about bringing Him glory and, and as, as you're living for one, when you start with the one purpose that seek first the kingdom of God and His, you'll see that, that God's kingdom is being built. Sunday, Christmas Eve, I uh, had a, 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 a malfunction in the Christmas story. Oh, and someone got born again on Christmas Eve and came up and said, I want to give my life to Jesus. You know what I saw? I, I, I could have been looking over here. But instead I was looking uh, at the, I'm here just to bring God glory. That's it. That, so it's not about how great I am. 
It's not all about what I have. It's not about how big my house is. It's not about all these things. Can I tell you, directing your life into a place of overflow often looks like you and I untangling some of the presumptuous sins. It often looks like that. And my, my Christmas Eve ended in a rejoicing state instead of a dismal what didn't. I saw a shooting star only because of where my eyes were positioned. Only because of where I set my focus. Can I say we set our focus today? As you go home to be with your family, you set your focus to, to this. As for me and my house, we're going to seek the Lord this year like we never have. Can I tell you, 2024 will be the best year you've ever had. If it's your best year spiritually, it'll be your best year you've ever had. If you're, if he's one, can I tell you, if he's number one, Every, you're going to find two and three and four. You're going to find order and you're going to find advancement and you're going to find fulfillment and you're going to see the stars and you're going to go, wow, wow, wow. In one year, in 30 minutes, I saw more. In one year, I saw more of God move in my life than I have in my whole lifetime. Can I tell you that's how he's working? In, in, in one year, 2024, uh, this is the, you, this is, this is what I got this year as I was looking into the year. I got to Oklahoma October 1st that evening. And um, the last three years, I've, I've kind of just made this a habit where that first time I get into the woods for the year, I just, I don't try to kill a deer. I know that sounds funny, but I just try to be present. Now, if one walks in, you know. But the most important moment for me is just to get there. And to sit. And I found myself up on looking out over this, this field. And um, cause I was asking the Lord, what, what about this year? What is there? And I, this is what I heard. I heard 2024, a year of open door. And, and, and I, it's like it's just all of a sudden you could just step through. You could just step through. You could just step through. But when, after I heard that, it, was, I also, it wasn't just like the open door to all good things. And I didn't even know I was going to share this this morning. I, I, I kind of shied away from doing this because it kind of felt like a heavy word. Because as much as it's a good word, can I tell you, an open door can be really dangerous. Anybody lock their doors at night? Can I tell you there's some doors that need to be closed in our lives? Just walk through. You're, it's like that quick. Open door. So Lord, where are the doors open? What doors am I to walk through? If there's a door to be closed, Lord, I'm, uh, Lord, I'm trusting you. But I just heard it, a year of open doors. You're going to see things happen quick, both good and bad. Can I tell you, reading Revelation, just like it says in chapter 1, blessed is he that reads this book aloud. Can I tell you, it would be a good thing to, to read, or maybe even on the reading plan, just go in there and hit play and listen to the whole book of Revelation. Can I tell you what it would do? It would cause a culmination. We would see the end. And there, when we see the end from the beginning, it helps us number and order our days a little bit better. If he calls the end from the beginning, how many of you know we should see the end from the beginning? If you and I would go there and, and, and read Revelation or let it play, let it play for our family. Oh, I know there's a lot of things I don't understand, but the word is spirit. It's not this. You don't have to get it here. Just let it, if you could just let it play, and you could let it, it's like, whoa, whoa dragons and, and, and horns and, and plagues and, and all this chaos and Redeemer and Redeemer and Redeemer and heaven and, and hell and mm -hmm. all of that. Yeah. Yep. It would, what it causes is it causes awareness of reality of one trip. The awareness of reality of one trip. Your life is not like a credit card where you can just keep swiping and just keep swiping and get to the end and go, I'll just put a payment on that. You truly have a, a limited number of days, a limit, just like a limited number of dollars, and it would be good for us to know the end. 
from the beginning. And we would order. And there would be a strength to do that. Go ahead. Um, so th this, you can just write this passage in your notes. We won't um, go through the whole thing for time. But Luke 2, 22 through 38. And this is the um, passage of Jesus being born. And uh, Joseph and Mary bring him to the temple. And this is where we see Simeon and Anna. And what's amazing is um, they were promised that they would see the Savior before they passed earth, time on earth. And um, if you look at that story, it's pretty amazing because you see, you know, when you hear of a Savior coming, you know, they had heard of a Savior coming to earth. He's going to save Israel. He's going to save mankind. They put their own interpretation on what Savior meant. And what do we see? Jesus came as a baby. And what we were talking about this morning that's so cool about this story is Simeon and Anna, when they saw, when Joseph and Mary brought Jesus and they saw him, you know what they didn't do with that promise? They didn't assess the promise. They just received the promise. They received Jesus for who he was. He didn't, he was a baby. I mean, he talked about, I think maybe Christmas Eve or Sunday, but he, it wasn't, it wasn't a full-grown man. It was There's a lot that could go wrong. Rejoice in the seed. There was a lot that could happen. Yeah, but what did they do? They rejoiced in the seed of the promise. They rejoiced in that seed. They didn't assess it and go, well, how is this going to work out? What's going to happen? God, how are you going to do this? How? Are, no, they just received and said, this is salvation. Salvation has come. And I think there's a lot of times things that we're waiting for and looking for. And the promise, the seeds of promise are all around us. But we have in our head how the promise is supposed to look fulfilled. And it's right there. We just have to rejoice. I think we just need to do some more rejoicing. Rejoicing at the seeds of promise that are all around us. What is that? Gratitude, thankfulness for what God has given us, what he's provided to us. And, you know, we talk about this a lot, but the more you begin to do that, the more you begin to see that in your life. And the kingdom, what is the kingdom? When we talk about, again, Matthew 6, the kingdom of heaven. Seek first the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom is the area in which God's word rules or a king's rule has, or word has dominion. That's his kingdom. So when you think about that, when you, what God's word has dominion here. So you can rejoice as you seek you can rejoice about the word like she was talking about, the word of God, the seed of God's word. You can rejoice over that. You can rejoice over that in my life. I've been, I'm, I'm serving him. I'm seeking first his kingdom. He rules in my life. You can rejoice over those things. Those little things. Your seeds. Rejoice over getting the seeds. Rejoice over them. Amen. So we're just going to close with this, um, with that question again. Why? Why are you here? This is the question we've asked ourselves. Why? Or what? Why? Why are we here? What do you have for us this year? Asking some questions, so that you'd have to answer. So we'd have to answer. And. Um, Write that down. And let that be a filter. Write down what you hear. I heard uh, clearly before I, I sh shared that just in my heart, I heard um, just talking to dads. So I just want to talk to dads for a minute, just for a second. Um, I don't even know what I'm supposed to say. I just heard in my heart, talk to the dads. God's given you a grace to stand as a father. Do not be the measuring stick. Let the Lord measure you. Let the Lord measure you. He'll measure you. He'll direct you. He'll correct you. And he'll also give you everything that you need to lead your family well. Don't undermine your voice to your children, to your spouse.
God created you to lead. And so you're capable. So take charge. Not in your own strength, but in the grace that God has given you. And you'll lead your family well this year. As you lead under and in and with the word of God. So start with his word before your eyes and before your family. If you'll do that, you'll find you step into a new place of truly being, in a sense, in your home as God created you to be. A king, a priest, a leader, the prophet of your home, one who declares the end from the beginning. God needs a leader he designed his design I know there's all kinds of things today women ladies stick with the word and that includes understanding headship I didn't say lordship I said headship Jesus is lord of both but just headship and, and in a sense coming under and lifting up not tearing down but, but it, saying about, not just to, but behind what God says about your man. This is to husband. If you're married or you don't have, that's not for you. But I just felt like it's important just to talk to, you can do it. You, so many times it's like, well, I don't know where to start. I don't know how to, I don't know. The expectation is always so this and so that. And I just, it would be better just to just exist. No, lead lead. You lead best. We lead best when we follow. So get God's word out in your home. Put it before your eyes. And I'll tell you that, that just the whole uh, Bible reading would be a great place to start with your kids. Maybe you could be the leader of Proverbs to your children, to your family. Maybe you're on your own, but maybe fathers read the Proverbs to their kids. Because I tell you that you have way more to impart to your kids than you've given yourself credit for. Can I tell you, as you read Proverbs, there's wisdom that God has imparted to you that you're going to need to sharpen to your kids. It, that's what all that is about. Is he was remembering his father's words, remembering. And so um, be a good good idea. Amen. God bless. Um, let's, uh, let's, let's close with that. Go ahead and how you wanted to end that. Okay, we can just go ahead and stand up. I just want everyone to close their eyes if they can. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And we're just going to set our affection on him just for a moment before we're dismissed here. Every, every eye closed, no one looking around, and this is just time for you to reflect with him. Thank you, Lord. And I want us to just ask that question that we asked earlier. Why am I alive? And I just want you to just ponder that question. Why am I alive? I want you to just reflect back. Say, take some time. You know, some, for some of you, there may have been things that God spoke to your heart years ago. Maybe things that when you were um, even a child, big dreams, things that maybe you've let go of because you've said, I'm too old or I can't do this or it's too far gone or that's never going to happen. But I just believe God's just rekindling rekindling just a fresh fire with him just reuniting us to that first love with him and then from that place vision flows from that place dreams flow from that place so we're just going to be quiet for just a minute here and let um, our musicians play and just let the Lord speak to you just be quiet
finished being imparted today. Reignited. And for activating your church, your people, for your glory. Bringing about your kingdom, your way, here on earth as it is in heaven. The gifts and the callings on the inside, the gifts and the callings activated, the steps taken, and fulfillment realized. Father, thank you for the ordering of our days. You first. trust you. We trust you. We give you honor. We thank you for this year. We thank you for 2023. And what a blessing. We thank you for even just times of remembering your faithfulness as we as we celebrate the rest of today. That we just remember your faithfulness and your goodness and your kindness. As we look back at pictures or, 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 or we recall. Father, thank you for your faithfulness. You've been faithful. You'll be faithful. We thank you for a bright 2024. We thank you for bringing things in order. We thank you for your sorting and arranging uh, and, and creating uh, the picture for our lives that you've designed. We just say, have your way this year in 2024. We give you honor. We celebrate and we worship you and we put you in that high place in this house and in our house and beyond church. And in our house, we say, we will serve you, Lord. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. Well, God bless you guys as you go. Enter into 2024. It's good if you need prayer or healing or anything like that. We'd love to be the church and agree with you. See God, God move on your behalf. Other than that, we'll see you guys next year.